Hey guys, welcome back to Clamfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And uh, yeah, it's bad news for the Rings of Power. Uh, season three, season two is not doing very well according to Forbes. And we've got some data showing that like half as many people watch season two as season one. Shocker. It's, I'm so shocked. It's almost like if people didn't like the first season, they don't come back for the second season. So yeah. This also explains why the Acolyte got canceled, guys, because the first season wasn't good. Second season wasn't going to be good. So basically common sense. Common sense. So we will we will see if they make it to the uh, the five seasons of this uh, Tolkien adjacent uh, fan fiction that uh, Tolkien am, identifying Tolkien identifying fan fiction with kinder, gentler orcs, by the way. Have you seen that clip? Yes. Yeah, with the babies. orc family. I'm like, um, that's not how he made orcs. Yeah, it's not how they made horse. Well, well, we'll talk about this. Before you into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants. Guys, you get woohoo if you do. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to be up front. I don't give a shit about this show. I think it's it's uh, a disaster um, from what I've seen of it. I have zero interest in uh, diving into it. Uh, that being said, I really didn't care for the, the Hobbit movies either, and those were Peter Jackson. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I love the original trilogy, but like the Hobbit movies were... Uh, pretty boring i thought and very uh, overly dependent on cgi so i have no interest in this um but the things i'm hearing and the drama around it's just like everything else the uh the dumpster fire around this show and all the uh the controversy the non-traversies the the uh you know the, the brown hobbits you're racist if you don't like brown hobbits yes. even though they weren't in tolkien and... basically anything that if you don't agree it's some istophobia of some sort yeah yeah, so let's um let's talk about this because the number's not good. We'll go out to uh, the Forbes article here in a second, but Samba TV just dropped the uh, ranking uh, for the week and the top streaming programs. Um, Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power season two was number seven. Hey, at least it made it. That's better than Accolade did a lot of times. So. Did a little bit better than Furiosa, but um, yeah, all these Netflix shows that I've never heard of beat it. Some of them, I think, are they movies? Because Furious is a movie, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. I think a lot of people, I think anymore, um, if people don't go to the theater to see a movie, it's not necessarily because they think the movie is bad. They're just like, this one, I can wait for home video or streaming or whatever. I don't need to go to the theater to go see it. But yeah, number number seven, that's not good. Variety has an article on it. Rings of Power was the number two streaming series over Labor Day weekend. Uh, following Netflix's worst X ever. Well, Samba Samba paints a different picture, but this is for the whole week. So people had had time to uh, to digest it. But uh, yeah, this is coming from Forbes. Uh, Eric Kane, very bad news for Rings of Power Season 3. As Season 2 viewership plummets, um, yeah, there's some very bad news for Amazon's massively expensive Rings of Power show. Uh, a prequel to Lord of the Rings, not really. Uh, Deadline reports that Samba TV, which tracks streaming numbers, has noted a massive decline in viewership from one to two. According to Samba TV data, 1.8 million U.S. households watched the first episode of season one. Okay. Season two had half of that. Yeah, that's not good. Just 902. I mean, I'm surprised lot. they got that much. I mean, because by the end, from what I remember reading, was that the, the show was, it started out with a larger number, and by the end, like, it dwindled drastically. So yeah. I'm surprised there was that many turning it, tuning in. I think a lot of people were just tuning in to see if it got any better um, or to see how it compared, you know, and they probably won't come back for the next episode. Yeah, but I think it was like only 37% of people that started it actually finished it. That's they, what I'm saying. Yeah, they said season two is half of that. And they actually gave it four days for its streaming debut. Season one had three days. Oh, so that's even the extra day to set it's up even the numbers. Worse. Um, it's even worse. Interesting. They're saying that it could be the decline in Amazon's marketing budget. No. I don't think so. No. Um, they were are they? Yeah, the packages did have power, rings of power branding and stuff. That's true. But it was like a simple thing of printing them on your boxes. It wasn't like a super expensive thing to do. I mean, it's expensive, but in you know relation to everything else, it really wasn't. And they just didn't bother. Yeah. Um, and. How many of the views, I mean, this is the thing with uh, Amazon with the Fire TV stick. Sometimes, uh, you know, streaming shows will just autoplay. Like you're watching one thing and the next thing you know, it's on something completely unrelated. It's not even the same series. They just want you to watch it. 
Uh, yeah, this happens a lot. But uh, yeah, I said basically, you know, you can come up with all kinds of excuses, but the first season was bad. People did not come back for the second no. season. And you want to know why? I mean, this is kind of what happened with Masters of the Universe. They're mentioning uh, Bear McCreary, who did the uh, the uh, music for Revelation, Revolution, whatever. And he's well-liked in geek circles. He did the music for Battlestar Galactica. He does fantastic work. But nobody came back for the second series of Masters of the Universe because the first season was so bad. Yeah, but uh, but ironically, the second season wasn't. Yeah, but that's the I mean, thing. You only get weirdness. one chance, I mean, there were right? some weird things in it. Like, the, there were some weird overtones so here and there. But overall, it, the, if the, the first season had been what the second season was, they wouldn't have had a problem. Yeah. You know, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so even if they fix issues with this season, which I'm not here, I'm hearing they aren't with the Rings of Power. Um, now, I guess there's more issues than there were before. Uh, if they could fix it, it's not might not even do them any good because people are already checked out. Yeah, and the people that would have been into this, you know, for the most part, would have been the the diehard Tolkien fans, and they basically gave them a huge middle finger. They fired. Well, they did multiple times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's it's just really bad fan fiction, right? And then we've got the uh, the kinder, gentler orcs, which uh, now they have families because we got to jump on that bandwagon too, because uh, you know D and D's doing it, and orcs are problematic, so we have to show that they are people too. Orcs are people too. And uh, you shouldn't denigrate them. And I'm like, no, orcs are fodder, right? In D&D, they were just, uh, you mine them for XP. But <laughs> yeah, uh, that's what they were, right? But yeah, um, he's bringing up in this article that the uh, the showrunners are, are not experienced. These are people that kicked around Hollywood for like 10, 12 yeah, years. They, they didn't get rid of them. They, they kept the same people. They kept same people. Yeah, and they yeah. did. They were like, they were what, Abrams people, but they tried for years and years to get stuff picked up and couldn't get anything. And the reason that they set them apart, they said that, that they got this was because they learned to speak Elvish. Yeah. I'm like, that doesn't mean you can do the job. You look like nerds. We'll just give you a job with like, the God, uh, you know, I mean, it's just give it up. And this is probably just the Tolkien estate. I don't know when the deal was made. I know that uh, the Tolkien estate, they sold out to Embracer Group. Now it's just, you know, like Embracer IP, which is a disaster. But like, I don't have any hope for any of these Lord of the Rings projects going forward. They yeah. had a really shit video game and the shit show. To be fair, though, you know, we don't know about the showrunners. We don't know what the mandates were for the network, too, though. Because I do kind of wonder, like you brought up He-Man. I do kind of wonder if there were mandates from Netflix regarding characterization and you know certain genders being promoted over others and things like that i've always kind of wondered if that was part of the problem and you have to wonder if that's something that was going on here as well it might have been i mean there might have been some you know meddling from the streamer as well i mean i'm, I'm not saying these guys aren't are, are, aren't incompetent because there's a lot of things they did beyond that that is kind of crap but i'm just saying i have to kind of wonder if some of the choices that were made were made because of the, the streamer not because of the showrunners. I could I could see that. I could see like some executive, you know, looking at the uh the treatment, right? The scripts. Oh, they and they gave it a treatment. Yeah, and being like, so we're all the black people. It's like, what do you mean? We're all the black people. Well, the we got these DEI check sheets now because right, Disney right. did it and now we have to do it too. And Hollywood was mandating it for awards that you had to have so many people yeah. in front of their camera, behind the camera of different ethnicities, sexual orientations, genders, etc. We don't have those because they weren't in the, even though there were women and stuff in it, we need more color, people of color that somehow I'll die by the movies, but um, we need people color in here. And if we want to be up for words and things like that, we have to do it. So I kind of wonder if some of the choices that were made that didn't make sense were because of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're bringing up, uh, but yeah, I think that's it. I think that's a big part of it. I think they're like, Oh, we need to look diverse and inclusive. Even if it means retconning something like Tolkien, no, I don't think that's the only reason the show... I mean, I'm not saying that's why the show sucks. I'm just saying I think the showrunners are also very incompetent. Oh, and yeah, there's a yeah. bunch of bad decisions and a bunch yeah. of actors shooting their mouths off and a bunch of other... And, you know, Gladrill doesn't even act like Gladrill and a bunch of other weirdness. So, I mean, even if that wasn't the case, they still would have fucked it up either way. I'm just saying I kind of wonder some of the weird choices that were like, what? It wasn't because of that. So they're, um, they're talking about the Rings of Power on Variety and they're going to try to spin it as a win, they said uh, the episodes. Yeah, of course they are. 
Yeah, they said there were 553.5 million minutes watched, uh, 2.7 million views, but they said that there was 1.2 billion minutes watched for season one, same time frame. And House of the Dragon saw 7.8 million views with the second season opener compared to 10 million with the series premiere. So they're like, they're like, yeah, you know, there's always a drop off to season two. But I'm like, yeah, but this one, you know, only 37 percent a 50 percent drop off. We're talking 50 percent. That's not good. So this is theoretically what would have happened with the Acolyte. And they knew it. Disney knew it. They're like, well, if season one is this bad and the word of mouth is this bad. Season two is going to be even worse. Let's not even do a season two because what, what's the point? You know, and I, I got to wonder if Amazon's not just going to dip out if, if they're I mean, it is it is financial suicide at this point to finish all five seasons of this show. Uh, but they, they I don't know. I, I just, especially if the viewership stays down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the first episode, first first episode, okay, fine. Even though it's it's very, it, it's probably the best shot of having an audience. But if it doesn't pick up by the end, I, you'd have to cancel it. So I have to wonder, right? Because there was a big, there's a big ass deal made about you know, there's no racism in Middle Earth, and now they had all the stars of the Pierre Jackson movies wearing the T-shirts and all that stuff, right? They had people making statements, right? If that. you didn't like it, it's because you're a bigot and a troll, yes. And that was the narrative. It's you know, do they have another narrative? Because that's the only narrative they ever seem to use. If they, the, I'd be shocked they had something new. If the show gets canceled, is 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 that going to happen again? Yeah. Are we going to have this? They never take responsibility for their own mistakes. Are are they going to be like, it's because of the Nazis, the Nazis and the the YouTubers. It's because the YouTubers somehow are the vocal minority yet swaying everyone against the show at the same time. (laughs) I'm like, no, again, the general public does not care. And uh, I don't think this bodes well for they were going to do another theatrical Lord of the Rings. They're going to do a Gollum movie. I'm like, don't. Does anybody want a Gollum movie? Uh, Andy Serkis does. He well, besides work. him. I don't think so. I don't think anybody's interested in the Gollum movie. They weren't interested in the Gollum video game. Well, they were, but that was because it was so bad. Yeah, it was pretty bad. But they were it's playing just... it because it was so bad. It was They had to play it. Yeah. Oh, my God. All right. We're going to wrap this up. Uh, yeah. Just real quick. I was thinking about the Gollum game being so bad. There's, there's what you need to do. If you're making a game, you need to go and try to be... The worst game ever, but in the way that people actually want to play it. Not like, you know, Dustborn and Concord, but like be the worst game ever, but still have something about it that people want to play it because it's it's so bad it's good. You need to go do that. It's still entertaining. We should do that. We should deliberately make Call it that. the worst bit, game ever. The worst game ever. Actually, it'd be funny if, it, if the worst game ever won like game of the year. That would be funny. Right. Anyway, you're going to wrap this up. We're going to wrap it up. Please subscribe. We'll talk later. Bye.